this is Ryan McMahon, and I'm going to read a very short chapter from uh, my new book that is about the life story of a Lakota medicine man, namely Plenty Wolf. The title of the book is called Plenty Wolf Medicine, and it's really about the spiritual path that all true paths seek to teach which is basically a few main character traits and character developments to make a human being balanced and strong while while here on earth but this chapter is not about Lee Plenty Wolf it's about his teacher it's a man named Mike Littleboy and this is uh, based on interviews that were taken in uh, South Dakota on the Pine Ridge Reservation during sacred and ceremonial times. So this one is, uh, it's really about the power of dreams and the power of the human spirit. Hopefully this will inspire people to um, pick up a book, pick up this book and give it a read. I think that uh, anybody who is um, seeking to just better themselves and better their life and their circumstances um, both internal and external circumstances could could benefit from these basic values of uh, character development. So, hope you enjoy it. Plenty of Wolf Medicine, Mike Little Boy. It had been about a year since I spoke to Mike Little Boy. We set up a meeting to talk about Lakota principles for this book, but time went by and I couldn't seem to get one-on-one time with him. Medicine men are often in high demand by the community that they serve. Not to mention, they are aloof and don't really offer their words of wisdom to be recorded or written down. The next Sundance ceremony came around and we set a time to talk away from others so as to get his words into the book. The important words he wanted to pass down. These things that were important. Mike Littleboy is Lee's teacher and mentor, so he has a perspective of many years and much experience. Lee revealed to me that Mike was the one who gave him his altar. I don't know all the subtleties of receiving an altar, but I know it sanctifies that you are one to carry the wisdom, teachings, and the path forward to the next generation. It is an honor to have Lee as a friend, uncle, and teacher. And I know it's very meaningful for Lee to have been given an altar from Mike. The altar is not just a bundle of sacred objects or a pipe bag. It is the teachings themselves and the way to preserve them. There are still many steps beyond this in a Chinupa carrier's journey. And when they come, they will also be given by the one who bestowed your altar upon you. He or she understands your development and what you should receive at any particular time. Mike knew my lifelong hardships with my body and my crippling lower back pain. Lee told him that I needed help and he agreed to carry out a healing ceremony for me. I was not sure what this entailed, but I have been healing and seeking healing for most of my life, so I agreed to receive it. On the day of my ceremony, sun dancers had been resting in between dancing rounds and I went to ask Mike if I could get a recorded interview of what he wanted in the book. Needless to say, he was friendly, humorous, and yes, aloof. I approached him three times before he began talking to me and asked me to sit down next to him. Although others were around, I felt this was going to be an important talk, but I did not have my recorder with me. I knew it was pointless to get up and go track it down. The importance of the moment was too compelling to leave. I sat and listened. He opened up and dropped some fruitful knowledge on me. At some point, I knew I would have to remember as much as I could and do my best to include his sentiments here. I knew he would rather me understand the teachings than to be able to write it down. He has a way about him, one that commands respect. If you're a person with no humility, you won't even see him. It's as if he functions on a different vibratory plane. He's not superhuman or transcendental. He is simply real, a real human. These same qualities I see in Lee as well. He explained a lot of things to me sitting there underneath that Sundance Arbor 
and most of them I can't really articulate, though they made an impact. I suppose they are somewhere within me and will be called upon when necessary. His way of teaching was more an awareness or a way of being than that of skeptical instructions. I think he wanted his part to be this way. I think he is less about words and phrases and more about living actions. He did tell me a few things that stuck with me. He tried to explain that for Lakota people, their commitment was non-normal. He wanted me to try to understand how committed one has to be to have a dream and commit to living that dream for their entire life without wavering or giving up on it. Either a red road walker will achieve that dream or vision in their life and then be at peace or take on a new dream or they will walk that original dream until they die. Most people can't commit to anything for more than a few minutes or days. So imagine when you have a vision or a powerful dream that tells you something or tells you to do something in order to become fulfilled. You see it through and decide your life upon that dream. He said very few people have this kind of energy, this kind of perseverance. Those that do will learn the Lakota life principles along the way to completing their dream. Dreams have that kind of power. They can teach us principles in life if we commit our spirit to them. Most dreamers ignore or doubt themselves out of completing an achievement. Most just quit. He gave me some perspective. I have dreams and some I have not fulfilled yet, but I will. I remember witnessing Mike Little Boy placing the headdress war bonnet upon Lee in a ceremony. It was a beautiful sight, sun blazing and feathers adorning. Mike made this moment a keen and special one for all who were present. He went on to say that you are the dream itself. He talked more about dreaming, but kept repeating this phrase, you are the dream itself. His emphasis was repeated and strong because he knew his syntax was different than most Western meanings. Deep within his meaning were layers of code to open up one to what it is to be responsible for dreaming and dreaming commitments. Not only are your dreams divine, but they can offer you insight into your own creative power once you see that somehow you are also the dreamer. It is not fantasy inspired by movies. The human spirit is able to dream, create, and see beyond our current perceived limitations. This shatters our limitations and frees up more intense energy to dream again. You are the dreamer, and if you have a noble dream, a dream of beauty, you can be that dream and commit your life to walking that dream into existence. Think about that. What dreams have you left on the shelf? What limitations have you set for yourself? And what dreams are you secretly dreaming to hold? those limitations in place with. You are the vision. You are the dream. Thank you. Please share. The book is now available on Amazon. You can look under Ryan McMahon or the title of the book is called Plenty Wolf Medicine. The Seven Lakota Life Values. Oh, 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 oh.